Okay, so I've been told by the internet we have approximately 10 hours and 31 minutes left before the world ends. That's it. That's all. So if there's something you got to do, or if there's a person you got to do, or if there's a purging you got to do, you better do it now. Well, the getting is good because this is it. Game over. In approximately 10 hours, 31 minutes, and 13 seconds, it is game over for humanity. So lock it in, okay? Now, the truth is, I just thought I'd throw that soundbite out to the trolls out there. You can, uh, you can make a short out of that or do whatever you want to your heart's content. The reality is this is going to be a benign nothing burger. And all those people that talked about how it was going to lead to earthquakes and the Illuminati is going to open up a black hole using the CERN Large Hadron Collider and engage in all kinds of ritualistic incantation and human sacrifice, all those people are just going to recede before it's even over. I mean, wait till tomorrow night. Nobody is going to be talking about this. In fact, all you are going to see tomorrow on the interstates where it's optimal for viewing is this. People with their phones up in the air. We are going to set a record for humanity for the most people pointing their phones simultaneously at the sky. Mark my words, that is going to be the story of the day. Just like this with their sunglasses on. You know, that's how you know we really are in the end of an era. There's no doubt about that. Now, the reason why states of emergency are being enacted in numerous places, from Niagara Falls in Canada all the way down to parts of Texas, is because, of course, what you're going to have is millions of people descending on key places where viewing for this otherwise uninteresting subjective celestial event is going to be perceived by members of the hominid species. Uh, it's going to cause telecoms overwhelm. It's going to cause the grid to be overloaded in some places. It's going to cause a lot of bad traffic problems. And uh, a lot of people probably struggle to find a hotel. Above and beyond that, though, this is maybe at worst a dry run for World War III with the federal emergency management agencies of the states. But above and beyond that, I really don't see anything happening. This is going to be a benign incident. There's going to be a bit of gridlock. A lot of people are going to be questioning why they wasted so much time to just go and get a recording of this on their phone when there's probably going to be 50 million cameras that are going to record it for the world to see in a much higher resolution and you don't have to spend $10,000 and stand on the side of the road like an idiot, almost get hit by a car driving by, somebody who has more sense and more things to do with their time. And some people are going to say, ah, you're just being contrary and why don't you just enjoy life and let, let us have these little moments. You know, for me, I guess I'm just a cosmic thinker. Things like this really don't intrigue me that much. To they, I would never drive more than, you know, 10 kilometers to see something like this. And I, I probably won't even get out of the building to go and look at it. It's not because I don't... Uh, it's because it's insignificant in the grand scheme of things. See, certain people only view the world from their little part of the world. And then there's other ones of us who, and this is not to speak from an elitist point of view, but, uh, you know, when you understand how the cosmos actually works and you realize that these random events are happening in the millions every second throughout the entirety of the galaxy and that it's only meaningful because of our point of reference on the big spinning rock in the void of nothingness, it's like, uh, this doesn't really matter. It's not intriguing to me whatsoever. What is intriguing to me is a possible world war emerging. So yes, the states of emergency from Indiana to Texas to Niagara Falls are concerning because of course, are they in fact using this as a dry run to get ready for things which will have a material impact on the rest of our lives. What's gold looking like right now? 2360, so it's up another 10 bucks today. That's about $70 billion in market valuation. If you can see behind me here, I got a scene from Apocalypto playing, and this is just to denote how science, the knowledge of science in the upper echelons, in the elitist priesthood classes, was used to manipulate people. So in the same way, you know, not much has changed because all these people are, you know, looking up, they're worshiping this guy in the same way all of us are going to be looking up through our cell phones and uh, worshiping the phone, essentially. It's almost like uh, 
paying homage to the phone, really, when you think about what we're going to see, because I guarantee you this is what we're going to see. You're not going to see anybody just staring up at it. Everybody's going to have their phones. And that's the, the crazy thing. But this is just how the esoteric knowledge of science is leveraged to manipulate people. And you got to wonder, how is this used today is the question. So in terms of the news, in terms of what's actually going on in the world, the economy is totally in the pisser. We have uh, the Israelis breathing a sigh of relief. I don't know why, because the threat has not passed. It's only passed in the own minds of the people who've said there was going to be this major threat. But they're happy because uh, the Iranians haven't attacked them yet. However, however, the CIA warned that the Iranians could attack within 48 hours. And they said the same thing in Moscow before the Crocus uh, terrorist attacks. And that happened around two weeks later. So I'm guessing that if you were the Iranians and you were going to do some sort of counterattack in retaliation for the death of your seven generals and high-ranking military officers, that you probably wouldn't do it when the Israelis were waiting for it in the highest state of readiness and when everybody was prepared, you would probably wait until they got a little bit more complacent, okay? So these ideas being floated around of ceasefires and this and that, I think this is all just a ruse. This is all just to buy a little bit more time. In fact, the top Iranian general came out today and said, Tehran will definitely take revenge for the murder of its citizens, but revenge is a cold dish. Revenge is a dish that is best served cold. It's a great, powerful statement because it's true. You don't have to react right away. In fact, it's better when to retaliate, and I'm not saying it's going to be good, and I'm not uh, you know, wishing any ill will or any escalation of this conflict, but if you were going to retaliate, you would wait until the person had their guard down. And that's what they mean by revenge is a dish that's best served cold. Iran will decide for itself when and how to carry out this retaliation operation. Now, there has been a large movement of Israeli troops and heavy combat equipment in the northern part of Israel in the city of Haifa and the Upper Galilee region as possible preparation for the escalation with Hezbollah on the border. And so the Israelis have been moving forces around. They've moved all of their brigades out of the Gaza Strip with the exception of one. And of course, there is talks that they're going to now be heading into Rafa. However, some people suspect, and uh, this is one possible way of looking at it, that if the Iranians were going to strike the Israelis, they would actually be in the Gaza Strip so they can avoid the escalation that might come from destroying what is, you know, technically, not legally, from an international law point of view, but technically what is, you know, the Israel mainland right now. So if the Is Iranians were to attack uh, the Israeli combatants while they were inside Gaza, would that be an acceptable horizontal escalation that would avoid a flaring up of a wider war? It's difficult to say. Uh, the Houthis have also informed Iran that they have 400,000 guys ready to go, but I don't think they have a ride to get there. So I guess they need a ride in order to get there. Now, one uh, thing that could arise tomorrow with this eclipse, and I probably should have said this sooner, but there's an intel uh, community that is warning of possible threats to public greetings across the United States. So the CIA, Homeland Security, the FBI, they're all warning of a increased risk of terrorist threats. In fact, it, this goes back months where the FBI director had indicated that he thought that the threats of terrorism in the United States were the highest that he's ever seen before, and that this was partly driven by the open border. Now, are there going to be large conglomerations of people for these eclipse events? Is there places where people are congregating to see it? I, I mean, people are that stupid. Uh, you could just see it from anywhere, of course. You could just go and sit in a 7-Eleven parking lot and get just as good a view, but I'm sure you know, there's going to be somebody selling tickets to, to get into like the best place to see it somewhere. So because we're going to see a lot of people preoccupied, uh, it would actually be a good time if you were a person who had evil intent to, to, to do something like that, unfortunately. So 
this is a time when, you know, you really do have to watch your six because if shit's going to pop off, it could very well pop off during that eclipse event. And these are going to be benign things again. Now, a friend of mine, Castle Bravo, had indicated that he thought that it would be an optimal time to launch a first nuclear strike. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, maybe. I don't understand how that's necessarily different from the nighttime. I think he has a more uh, sophisticated explanation as to why it in fact could be. So, yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe it is 10 hours, 21 minutes, and 16 seconds left until the literal end of the world. But I'm not entirely sold on the idea. But, you know, at this point in time, anything is possible because that old saying... If you know a fight's going to start, you might as well throw the first punch. And if the Russians and the Iranians and the North Koreans and the Chinese know that war with the West is inevitable, and if we are very weak right now, which we are, I mean, Canadian cities, I don't know if, if you've never traveled here and maybe you just go to some of the landmark places, you go to the nice clean parts of the city, there is an asshole of this country that is big. It is gaping. And it's getting bigger and bigger by the day, okay? Lots of the inner cities within Canada are just going down the shitter, okay? These, these are places that are going to start looking like Detroit pretty soon, especially here in the province that I live in. And uh, anybody who thinks that Canada is on an upward trajectory and that we're one of these hyper-modernized countries you are sadly mistaken. Maybe in the tourist spots, you know, you go to Vancouver, you go to Toronto, you go to the big cities, but above and beyond that, you know, people make fun of the Russians, man, but you ain't never been a small town Saskatchewan, okay? If you want to see some derelict living conditions, uh, just uh, go through southern Saskatchewan, through the towns or through some of the reservations, and you will see third world living conditions, mark my words, but they got running water and uh, LTE internet so i guess it's all good so in terms of what else is going on in the world uh the russians it, you know i mean I, I could have just made a whole episode about how the ukrainians have been attacking the zaporozhia nuclear power plant and now the media is actually admitting it okay so the ukrainians launched a volley of drones against the zaporozhia nuclear power plant now a year or so ago you couldn't say that without risk of cancellation. But now there's a, a narrative shift happening right now, and I'm noticing this, and maybe you're noticing it too, that even on MSNBC, they're starting to report that Ukrainians are targeting, and they use this very term, this is not my word, this is your word, mainstream, technopoly, whatever you are. They said, basically, that the Ukrainians were attacking the Russian nuclear power plant. Now, two things, that I just said you couldn't say a year ago. One, that Ukrainians were attacking a nuclear power plant, and two, that it's a Russian nuclear power plant, okay? Because this is in an annexed territory, not recognized, as far as I know, by the same countries from which those mainstream media sources originate. So it's interesting to see this narrative shift. Now, of course, there's still gonna be a NATO takeover, uh, they're getting ready in Moldova and Romania. That's going to be one of the main staging grounds now in Moldova and Romania. And of course, uh, the troop deployments are still in the cards for the French. That's still going to be a factor. This war is only going to escalate, unfortunately. A lot of people think that the Ukrainians are just going to fold. And while you are going to see some collapse of the front lines, uh, I don't think that you are going to see it go beyond what NATO wants it to go, okay? So if they don't want it to go beyond the Dnieper River, it won't because they'll start moving weapons in. Now, there is a lot of weapons moving in to these regions. It's just not moving into Ukraine yet. So we very likely will see NATO confront Russia all the same. And the fact that this is normalized now, I mean, they're, they're targeting a nuclear power plant. Now, of course, it would take a massive... Uh, bomb or detonation to destroy the nuclear reactors. But I think from what I'm told, the spent fuel uh, depositories are not as well protected. So if Ukraine did want to trigger a radiological incident, they could target there. Now, is there rogue elements right now operating outside the chain of command in Ukraine that are, uh, you know, funding these other operations? 
like the terrorist attack in Moscow, which now the Russians claim based on uh, testimony from uh, the perpetrators that they were in fact going to be paid by Ukrainians, although I don't think that's going to be admissible in any sane court of law because these guys have clearly been, you know, tortured to hell. They've probably been given all kinds of weird drugs to kind of break up, you know, whatever sort of... Uh, and these guys didn't look like the, the mentally, the most mentally strong individuals that could resist extreme levels of torture. Like, I don't think they were put through any sort of uh, a rigorous screening process to ensure that they wouldn't break. So if they knew something, you know, they sung like canaries for sure. But because of the methods used to extract that information, it's very likely that the international community is not going to buy it. However, a lot of these attacks on oil refineries, on the nuclear triad, are these rogue elements of the Ukrainian government acting independently of the centralized chain of command in Ukraine. This is very much a possibility because remember that prior to the war, the, there was numerous battalions, Azov Battalion was one of them, who didn't respect Zelensky that much for reasons that you could possibly imagine. And uh, they laughed in his face, okay? So these guys are going to be doing things that are probably, you know, outside of uh, what you, the Ukrainian government, as it currently stands, views in their best interests and what NATO views as its best interests. And of course, we're seeing oil continue to shoot up down a little bit today. Looks like gold is pulling back a little bit, but gold actually started out down today and then it shot up to like 2070 or 2080 and then it went back down again, but it's holding stable. And uh, so, you know, I'd say that, you know, the time to, the time to prepare, to continue to prepare is now. I always get these comments when I make videos. Like we released a video today about the Doricade. It's a incredible home security thing. If you have a door, you need this, okay? If you are a prepper, especially if you're a prepper and maybe people know you got stuff, you need to have a plan for home invasion. And that goes above and beyond your means of self-defense. You need time, okay? You need time and distance. That's what it's all about. Deterrence, security deterrences like this are time and distance. I can tell you right now that, you know, there's going to be a lot of wisecrackers say, oh, they're just going to come through the window and yada, yada, yada. And that is true. There's many ways you can, you know, get into a house. But in 80% of cases, most burglaries and home invasions, they happen through the front door. If you have something like this on your front door, but first and foremost, you have your three inch screws in your strike plate, in your deadbolt, in your hinges, you have all that done and you have this on top of it, this is going to buy you the precious, I wouldn't say seconds, I would say minutes that you need to get your ass in gear and get ready to respond in whatever way to the fullest extent that the law will permit you to respond where you are. So you need to go and watch the videos we release like this, okay? Because this is the real content, okay? This news stuff, talking about how bad shit is getting, I get that people like it because knowledge is power, but guys, you know, I care about you and I want you to be learning those skills. I want you to get something practical out of this channel above and beyond just being petrified every single night at uh, how bad things are getting. Yes, things are bad, but they're probably going to get worse. And uh, you got to put yourself in a position so that when they do get bad, you're ready to take care. Because one of these days, the lights are just going to go out and there's going to be no more internet uh, personalities to rely on for that information. And you're going to be on your own. And what you have at that point in time is what you're going to have probably for a long, long time. So please go and watch some of our blue strip content because uh, that's, that's the real stuff that I don't think, I don't want to say I don't think the, the algorithm wants you to see. I think it's more of a, the other algorithm doesn't know what this channel wants to be. So it kind of serves it up as current events content when it really isn't. But I would encourage you that uh, now is the time to do that because right now it's becoming kind of trendy to talk about nuclear war. You got people writing books about it. You got movies being made about it. In fact, the movie Civil War is coming out tomorrow or is it Thursday? Thursday, Civil War comes out. And uh, all of these, you know, apocalyptic type, you know, cultural, uh, what would you call them? Not cultural critiques, but, um, you know, just these, uh, this infatuation with the end times is starting to become very trendy. 
And when that happens, this is when the next step, of course, is going to be a big move, like a mass uh, commercialization of prepping. Okay, and then when you get to that point, that's when it's going to become more difficult to access a lot of the things that you can access right now because there isn't a huge demand for it just yet. But we're just but one black swan away from that occurring. And it appears as though it is going to occur in the Middle East. Now, in terms of that Civil War movie, <sighs> Rotten Tomatoes has given it a 93%. So that's kind of concerning for me because, you know, Rotten Tomatoes, they're, they're a part of the guild, the special guild. And as such, I almost wonder what sort of didactic moral lesson is going to be embedded within there that they want to teach us. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I hate to say the word because it's overused, I'm guessing there's going to be some woke aspect to it and that's why I got 93. But you never know, maybe Hollywood is changing its tune. In terms of everything else that is going on, the delinquency rate of multifamily housing is at the highest level since 2013. It is going up at a rapid rate and it's about to approach the levels of 2010. That is not good, okay? And they haven't even declared a recession yet. Notice, I don't know if you could see this, but uh, it was right here. This is the recession, okay? The housing crunch came afterwards because this is when the delinquency rate of people's housing came afterwards. Now we're already in it and they haven't even declared a recession yet which is scary. Maybe that's why gold is rising so precipitously. I think I'm gonna leave it there tonight because I got better things to do and so do you. Stay tuned. We got a lot of great content coming your way this week, I assure you. And uh, take pictures of people with their phones pointed up at the sky tomorrow and let's make that uh, hashtag meme on X or YouTube or wherever. Thanks guys.